sort of sit up here. Okay, everybody have a seat. Good afternoon and thank you very much for coming out today and supporting the first book on behalf of the Bayside History Museum. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping issues. Turn off your cell phones, please, because this is being recorded. Be careful who you whisper to next to you because this is being recorded and it really can pick up comments. I want to thank our sponsors, the Bayside History Museum, the Calvert Library, and the John Hanson Chapter for the Daughters of the American Revolution. And I want to take a minute and introduce elected officials that are in the audience. Um, first and foremost, Pat Nutter. When he was county commissioner, it was his priority to get us into the new building where we've been for 10 years now. And we so appreciate all of your work and efforts, Pat. So former <laughs> county commissioner. One of our current county commissioners, and I don't know where you are sitting right now, Catherine Grasso. Where's Catherine? There she is. Okay, thank you. The mayor for the town of Chesapeake Beach, where is Irish Mahoney? Okay. And the town council member for Chesapeake Beach, who very rarely misses anything that we do and supports history all the time, Larry Jaworski. And Mickey Hummel, who's back there with his camera. He makes all of these lectures possible. I'm very proud to introduce Vincent Turner, who is a co-author of this book. He walked into the Bayside History Museum 11 years ago when he was attending Northern High School. He was interested in history, he wanted to volunteer, and anyone that knows me knows that I put him right to work. Uh, I was working as a historic preservation planner for St. Mary's County government uh, starting in, in 2004 until I retired. So Vincent was working at the Bayside History Museum at that time and he interned with me several summers in St. Mary's County. We documented cemeteries, old mansions, measured trees for the Maryland Big Tree Program, and research, 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 research. Vincent graduated from St. Mary's College, took a break, and then pursued a master's degree in historic preservation and museum studies. He's going to graduate May of this year, 2024. It's been a really fabulous year for this young man. He got his first apartment. He got engaged to the love of his life, Deanna, who's sitting right here. And he's going to graduate in May with a degree, a master's degree. So if you think about it, at the age of 28, he is authored a book. Vincent? Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. We're really excited to be able to bring this book to you. A lot of good research has gone into this, and it's so nice to see the turnout and the people coming to the museum and posting online, saying about how excited they are uh, to see this book. Um, we're, we split this up into two sections. Um, I'm going to cover the methodology. So how did we put this whole thing together? And Grace Mary is going to talk about all the different pictures that uh, have been put into it and all of the effort you know, that went into creating a book like this. So, to begin, when you open up the book, you'll see a section like this. This is the, um, a rough table of contents. On the right side there, you see a plat map of North Beach. This was created in 1908, and this is what all of the town was based on. This is what they sold lots out of. This is what the North Chesapeake Beach Land and Improvement Company, whose name you can see in the top left there on the map, this is what they used to sell lots here in North Beach. Now, if you look close enough, you'll see the street names don't make any sense because they're not the modern names. So we haven't quite nailed down when they changed the names, but we think it was right around um, 1910 or so. Um, but I went and back and I actually figured out what all the modern day names are and I put that table in there for you. So you can see these historic maps and you can also see um, what they are now. And if you ever decide that you want to get into deep research, the modern names help you figure out what the old names are in all of the deed records and the title researching. Now, deed research can be really tedious. 
going into this project, um, we didn't put this book together like in the last three months. This has been a years long process. The deed research for this, um, I began in 2016. And it actually took me about two years. Um, the process was, I actually sat down with each of the deed books for Calvert County, and I read them page by page. It ended up being about 100,000 pages between 1900 and 1962, um, and I went and I created abstracts. Because if you look, the early deeds, um, like this one for example, this is for the Calvert Hotel, which is where the Sunrise Garden is located today. This is where the North Chesapeake Beach Land and Improvement Company sold lots out of. And it's a very important piece of our town history. So as you can see, it's all in cursive. Um, back then, they didn't have machines to type it out. They uh, didn't move to typewriters until about the mid-1920s. So the only way to get information out of here is to transcribe it by hand. So I would create abstracts, like you can see here on the bottom left. All of that information, all that cursive, gets translated down into little things um, just like that, make it easy to read. So you have the grantee, the person it's sold to, and the grantor who is selling it, um, and then you have the description of the property, along with the dates and the reference numbers. So you could use this and actually find this deed if you wanted to do some title research yourself. Now, imagine 100,000 pages of deeds and you have to transcribe them. So I created a giant list. It's chronological. These, you'll notice that the lots are all out of order, they're all for different times. And then I had to put them in order. So this is actually chronologically in order. Every single property in the town, I created a file which had this deed research in there. It has the property history from 2016 all the way back to 1900. There's about, I think when I researched this, it was 686 parcels within the town property. So I had to figure out 686 of these in order to even do the research to be able to figure out where the addresses are and the property histories. And it ended up looking really nice. So you'll see and the, on the right side there is what it looks like nice and condensed easy to read. So if you come to the museum and you say, I have a property you know, located at such and such address, we'll be able to give you a property history and talk to you about it. Now, it's not fully completed. Um, we're probably about a quarter of the way through, um, but we're eventually hoping to have every single property within the town limits researched all the way back to the original um, landowners. This book also took a lot of archival research. The most important archive, of course, is the Bayside History Museum here in North Beach. Um, we have hundreds of thousands of documents, um, everything from property books to tax ledgers to newspapers, photographs, everything you can imagine is here in the Bayside History Museum. And much of it has been digitized um, over the past 11 years that I've worked there. We also went up to Catholic University, um, and we found some very cool uh, information from a guy named John Hayes who's actually the president of the North Chesapeake Beach Land and Improvement Company for several decades. And he lived here in North Beach, down on 3rd Street. Um, we found things like letterhead from the Hotel Calvert, which you can see a, a scan of there in the middle. And then also we discovered a new newspaper that no one had ever even heard of before, the Bee. And this was here in the 1930s, and it was started by John Hayes. And it contains all kinds of information about um, the businesses and the goings on in the town. And we're hoping to find more copies, so maybe if you, know of anyone who's around here in the 1930s, then maybe they have some copies stored away somewhere. We would love to get um, scans of those. Um, we also went to the Maryland State Archives, and they had um, lots of early photographs and postcards. You can see in the bottom left there um, a picture of the beach right in front of um, the end of the boardwalk, the northern end of the boardwalk, where right now the bay comes straight up. This is what the beach used to look like in that area. So you can see just how much it's changed in about the 100 years since this photo was taken. Newspapers also provided a lot, a lot of information. It was really cool to be able to go back and research this. Um, so for our book, I actually went and I pulled out the newspaper names, which you can see on the left side there. Um, I tried all combinations of word searches and sometimes just read page by page to try and figure out uh, what information was available. So we found things like um, their building of the original St. Anthony's Church, which you can see a copy of that image there. It's, it's a poor quality, which is why we couldn't really include it. It didn't really print well. But it talks about the opening ceremonies, who was there to dedicate it, how much it took to build the, um, the church, what they used, um, you know, the fundraising methods, all kinds of very useful information. Um, we also found things like one in Good Roads in North Beach, which you can see here. One in Good Road to Chesapeake Beach, because back then it was all dirt. So whenever it got wet, it got marshy and gross, and you couldn't uh, get anywhere. So you can see road problems are nothing new. Uh, 
we also found quite a few goings on in the town. Um, so you can see on the right there, a man arrested as arsonist. This is uh, Joe Rose's casino. Um, he had a big casino that he built in the 1940s, um, down by where the Welcome Center is. It's uh, now an empty lot next to the new library. He had a huge casino that took up that whole corner block. And it burned down in 1945. They think somebody burned it down, but the newspapers um, reported that no one was charged, and it's basically a cold case. But you can find all kinds of useful information in newspapers, and I've researched plenty of newspapers in uh, both Washington, D.C. and Baltimore. Now, one of the most important things is we have all these old photographs, right? But where were they taken? So one of the projects um, that I actually helped, I developed it and led it, was doing a North Beach building survey. So last year, um, in January, I went around, um, and I also had assistance from Olivia and Griffin, who are in the audience today, and we took photographs of every single standing building in North Beach within the town limits. Every single building that we could see from the street, we took a photograph of it. So that way we would have a record to say, in January of 2022, these are the buildings that were here. And we included many of these photographs within the book. So you'll see these photographs are actually in there, you know, if you flip through the pages and look. And we've compared them to the old photographs that we have, so you can get some idea of what the changes have been over perhaps the past century. Now, at the very end of the book is a really cool chapter, and this is something that's still ongoing. This is just the list as we have it now. These are the cottage nicknames, because back then they didn't have addresses in North Beach. It was pretty much if you're getting mail down here or you're giving directions, you knew the family who was living there, or many of them often had nicknames. And so we have a huge list, um, there's several hundred on this one, and we have a few more that we're trying to figure out where exactly they are. And it took all kinds of research trying to figure these out too. So if you look on the top right there, you'll see a photograph of some cottages. We're not sure where they're at. We're trying to nail that down, we'll get it eventually. But you can see they come up with some pretty funny names. So you have the salon on the, the far left there, the crazy house there in the middle, and then the hospital on the far right. So kind of fun nicknames, you know, you want to be creative with it. Um, we also um, went through the deeds, and sometimes, as you can see here, it has the nickname of the cottage within the property records. So it's called Wolverine, and you'll notice it's actually the first name in the cottage tidbits. So this is where we found it, within the deed records. Now, one of the best sources for nicknames for cottages are Sanborn maps. These were created by a company who actually came down uh, to North Beach in three separate years, 1923, 1930, and 1938. And for whatever reason, they decided to record the cottage names on this official map, which was actually used for insurance companies. And that's where we found a lot of this information. So this is a really nice scan I was able to get at the University of Maryland. They uh, have a 1930 uh, map. And if you look in, you know, you zoom in real close, you can see the nicknames written here. So you have Paradise, that's kind of a funny name there, right? Uh, how about the Come Again? Oak Lodge, eh, not too bad, but maybe that's you know, a little hotel they were running, right? Or how about Can You Cook? That's a pretty funny one, right? <laughs> um, they also have lots of useful information on here for um, the research we were doing. So you'll notice there's a huge cistern here, right? So North Beach um, had artesian wells, which were located throughout the town, and that's what the fresh water supply was. And they had cisterns that were also distributed around, so that people would have fresh water, and for the fire company to have water to fight fires with. Now, on the right side there, I zoomed in a little bit more, you can see the Calvert Hotel here. And then you'll notice there's like a garage in the back, and then there's an office, which is probably the office that the North Chesapeake Beach Land and Improvement Company sold the lots out of. And now we know where exactly that was on uh, the property there. And you can see lots of buildings which are no longer standing. So, just across the street from here, all of these buildings once stood. This is where the senior apartments are. There was a number of stores, and the North Beach filling station is right here. You can tell because it has these gas tanks labeled up front. So we were able to find lots of good information using these maps, and we're able to put it together in a book for you to enjoy. And with that, I'm going to hand it off to my co-author here, and she'll talk about all the fun photographs we included for you. Okay. you just click. I've got to find my little bit. Okay, this photograph is on the front cover of your book.
For those who haven't had an opportunity to read the book yet, think about Mexico and think about where you park. This is the parking lot of Mexico. This existed like this from 1924 to 1929. My grandfather bought all of this property from 1930 to 40, and I would love to find a picture of what was there then. We do not know what was there after 1930, but this is Mexico's parking lot. <clears throat> Tom's Cabin and Lunch. You can get your palm read. This is right by Mexico's parking lot on the corner there, but they used to have a nice luncheonette here and you could rent cabins. And this was in 1927. The back cover of the book is our beautiful North Beach Volunteer Fire Department. For those of you that don't know, the Bayside History Museum is located within the original North Beach Volunteer Fire Department. So the two-story por portion of the museum is the original fire department. This is a particularly interesting picture because our local firefighters went up to the nation's capital when they took delivery of a new fire truck. That's what you're seeing on the left. On the right is what we moved into. That's the original fire department. This is fun. How many here go to Neptune's? Neptune started as Ewald's grocery store. I just got this picture on the right this week. Somebody bought the book and said, I've got the original Fred's Grill. So thank you, Bill Shockley for sending me this photo and allowing us to use it today and in the future. And when I was a little girl, my grandfather's lumber company was across the street from this. And if we were good, we would get a penny or a couple pennies to go to Fred's to get candy. So a lot of people that grew up here, Fred's was a staple for many of us. House of Mirth. No one has ever seen this photo before. This was in my grandfather's belongings. To the right of it, Captain Oscar's luncheonette. It's very hard to find through research when it was Captain Oscar's and when it was the next photo, which I'm going to show you, which was Ingleston's, because people leased from the owner of the property. So unless they owned the property, we couldn't tell when it was there. The photo on the right is the 1933 hurricane, which took down the entire waterfront. I mentioned the photo on the left because this is what the Bayside History Museum is asking the community to find for us. Everyone has family photos, and sometimes you like your picture of Aunt Mary or Aunt Sally or your grandfather. But it's what's behind the photo that is so important to people like Vincent and myself and other historians. Had they not taken a picture of this darling little boy, we would have never had a picture of the House of Mirth because it was gone in 1933. Here's the luncheonette that I just referred to. Again, we don't know exactly how long it was there. We know that would have gone down also in 33. Again, on your right-hand side, for those who grew up here or when you go to read the book, this is the bottom of the Miramar Hotel. And this was from the Smoky Ward collection. That's actually his sister, Babe, who worked downstairs in the restaurant that was at the bottom of the Miramar Hotel. Again, when you get home, look at your family photos and think about letting donating or bringing them in for us to scan because we can figure out where the property was and use it for future publications. Uncle Billy's Movies. This place hopped thousands of people every week. There's never been any place to park in Chesapeake Beach and North Beach for more than 100 years. So when people complain about parking, <laughs> it has been an issue forever. 
Uncle Billy's was the place to go and look at the actors and the movies, the quality of entertainment that we had in this wonderful little cosmopolitan town. Russell Hall. Again, thank you, Russell Hall, former mayor, was an excellent mayor. He loved cars. So we have pictures of his cars, but behind this car is the arcade that would have been on Bay Avenue and the corner of Fifth Street. And he won that car in 1940. On the right hand side, he's got his new Thunderbird car. And behind that is the gas station that Vincent referred to earlier that was right across from this town hall. So the senior center is on top of where that gas station is now. Crab Trees was the name way back when. And what was interesting about Crab Trees is the town of North Beach and the elected officials had an arrangement with them and we've got all kinds of bills and receipts from them making sandwiches every day for the prisoners and they came and picked up wonderful little sandwiches to feed the prisoners because most of the people that were in our jails at that time and had a little too much to drink. They really were not uh, felons or anything like that. But they were well fed when they were in the North Beach Jail. Um, we did not have a picture of Sneeds and somebody again got this book. This book hasn't even been out two weeks yet and sent me that picture and said, Grace Mary, and I was like, yeah, because we had been trying everywhere to get a picture of Sneeds. So it went from Crab Trees to Bobby Tucker, Tucker's Hardware. It was Sneeds, and today it's the Metropolitan, and it's right on the corner of Chesapeake and Second. Again, pictures are so important. I wish we had had this before we printed the book. Robert S. Mead was my grandfather. He came here in 1923. He was a railroad conductor. He fell in love with the town in North Beach and never went back. He uh, served on the town council the 30s and 40s, mayor of the 50s, and his local lumber company, which would have been two buildings down from this town hall, where the urgent care is today, caught on fire in 1945, and that whole block burnt to the ground. The fire started with the grill next door. There was a grill fire. So how great is it to have a picture of another place that used to be here that you wouldn't have if it wasn't in some family's collection? On the right is one of the ads that he used for the lumber company. North Beach and Chesapeake Beach and Rose Haven have had parades forever. The Firemen's Parade was an every year occurrence. Majorettes from all over the whole state, Kentland, Morningside, everyone came down to participate in all the parades. This one was during our 300th anniversary. And what's important is this is the town of North Beach. There's my grandfather in the back as mayor. And that's all the beautiful girls in the town riding on the float in the parade. Third in Dayton, another wonderful family photo. I don't knew, know who Carmela and I are in 1947, but thank goodness for this photo. This is an empty corner today. This is the corner of Third and Chesapeake. When you leave here and turn left, you'll see that empty corner. All of this activity used to be right there. This building in particular was started after 1910. Dr. Bailey's house, local doctor, who owned this corner and leased to a movie theater, Parker drugstore, etc. This was Grunz before it was Frenchies, but it gives you an idea of the location. So here's two wonderful women taking a girl trip, coming down to the beach to have some fun. And I just love this photo. And again, I emphasize the importance of family photos and getting them to us because many times it's what's behind them that is so important to history. I love these ads. You can get newspaper ads everywhere. But um, the sanitary grocery store was a real big ad. They opened here in 1928. 
They would have been directly across the street from the town hall and down to your left a little bit. Again, today the senior center is sitting on top of where this used to be. But uh, I like the prices, so I thought you all might, you know. <laughs> We're all grocery store poor right now, so it's kind of nice to see what it used to be. This is fun. These are 1940s. The bay froze over. I used to have people say the bay doesn't freeze. I said I grew up here. I have seen it frozen. My brothers and I walked out to the duck blind when we lived in North Beach Park. So this is a picture of Mr. Ward, who was former Commissioner Joyce Terahee's brother and owned the local country store up in Dunkirk. And he and the family have gone to church and now they're out ice skating. Again, behind them is Uncle Billy's, and behind them is the arcade. So it's wonderful to have the picture of the but it's also wonderful to have the picture of the buildings that were back behind them. Okay, I'm asking you for personal photos, so I'm sharing one of mine. This is me. This is my mother. We were born and raised in North Beach Park. At that time, North Beach Park was considered North Beach. We lived on First Street, which later got renamed Beach because all the drives in North Beach Park are named after a tree. What's important about these two photos, this is my younger brother, all of the jetties that used to be there and the fact that we had beaches there when we grew up. Those beaches aren't there anymore, but they used to be, and they were there really because of the jetties. The jetties helped the sand accumulate. So it's kind of sad that we can't go back to that a little bit because it's hard to find places to swim. This is another fun tidbit. This is in front of my home in North Beach Park, and there's a lot of interest about this photo. One, the plane came down because my grandparents lived on that same first street and he was mayor then so they came down to visit by plane if you know your local history um, mayor lane in the 1940s of north beach worked out an agreement with the town council and mayor of chesapeake beach to use the defunct uh, horse racing track as a landing strip and there were all kinds of ads and encouragements to get down to North Beach quicker from Washington, D.C. You could fly down. I have no less than three pictures of airplanes coming into our town during that time, and it is just so interesting to have this. Behind the plane is a real interesting, that's the duck line. And if you have attended former lectures here, and heard about the 11J Marvel, that is the duck line that four survivors hung on to waiting for to be rescued. And it was my parents' boat and Aunt Jane's engine that the men went out on and subsequently earned a Carnegie Medal of Honor for rescuing the people off of that very duck line in this photo. So there's a lot of stories that can be told in a photo if you know where to look and know where they are. Jimmy Lyons, this is particularly interesting. Gloria had been working with us for 16 years. This was her grandfather. What's so interesting about this is the uniform. What's so interesting about this is he is credited with creating the first official citation to give someone a ticket with. <laughs> Go ahead, Lamb. I know it's a good thing. Um, he is also credited for being the first law enforcement officer in North Beach Park. Everyone, the town charter authorized the appointments of bailiffs and other police officers. Um, Vincent has a picture of the jail that was here in, in 1919, which was actually on the site where this town hall is. And you have to understand back then, uh, if it was a particularly busy weekend or an incident broke out or something happened and you were from here, back <coughs> letter smiling, they would deputize 10 or 12 of you right on the spot. You became deputies for the night. So it's, uh, we've really got a rich history in both towns about the deputies. I wanted to show this because um, the future publication, which is more detailed on North Beach, we want to find out and get pictures of anybody that was law enforcement. 
So again, please look through your family records and see what you have. This is not the end. Those are all the communities that we represent at the Bayside History Museum. Any photos that you could give to us, some people don't want to part with a family photo, so I want to mention I really do understand that, but you can bring it to the museum five days a week. We will scan it and hand it back. Uh, and then we have permission to use, which is great because you might see your photo in our next book. If you weren't able to purchase a book today, uh, you can purchase books at Roland's Grocery Store in Chesapeake Beach, Marlene's Lighthouse Market and Sign Store in North Beach, and when Georgie opens Tyler's Crab House in April, they'll be available there also. So I want to thank everyone for coming today. Um, if you haven't purchased a book, please come buy one. This is uh, a fundraiser for our museum. And uh, both Vincent and I, uh, if you have any questions, we're glad to answer any questions. Can you talk a little bit about the railroad that used to come here? We can, but we're kind of saving that from oh, what we okay. do at Chesapeake Beach. We really kept this in North Beach, but okay. I will say that in the North Beach records, um, there was an attempt in the town of North Beach to install, create, and purchase a railroad that would take you down through North Beach Park to what was in Rose Haven. And I can say that in the book, you'll see uh, wooden planks, and Vincent referred to the dirt roads. It was really hard to get around here. It was dirt roads, and every time there was a, a bad rain and mud, they were constantly looking for help to drag the roads and make them passable because people use ox carts, oxen. You mentioned the railroad, but there was a trolley that came from the railway museum, uh, facility today and came through the town to bring people over to North Beach and they had to put wooden planks down to get it across the spot where the current <coughs> apartment house is now and where the pink palace is now. Any more? Uh, Jenny? A question about ownership. The Carroll County Historic District Commission commissioned an architecture historian firm to look at North Beach and when they did their research, I think, said that there was a lot of women owners. Oh, that's a great question. Thank you, Jenny. Um, the Ewalls were one of the most interesting families that you could ever imagine. Really, a book should be written on them. Not only did they come here in 1920s and start their first grocery store where Neptune's is today, they bought the groceries down, you'll see pictures in the book, with a horse and wagon. Those two women were really entrepreneurs, Ella and Emma. They owned 55 businesses and 55 houses in North Beach in the 50s, if you think about it, when women weren't allowed to own anything. So they were just amazing. Uh, and actually, they were very smart because they kept those properties to keep all the businesses going. If you think of the workforce that you needed, uh, in these towns during that time, there were no less than 15 boarding houses, restaurants, bars, everything, nightclubs, uh, movie theaters. We've had three bowling alleys in this town alone. Think of the workforce that you needed to open up and be able to serve breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then Ewalls and a couple of the other places, they would be open till 2 in the morning because we had slot machines then. And I didn't talk much about the slot machines here, but growing up here, we had slot machines in the laundromat, the grocery store, highs. Everyone had a slot machine wherever you went. So, um, yeah, <laughs> at least two. So, um, but those ladies were just uh, amazing what they had and what they accomplished in a time period where it was really not so easy for them to do that. It's a good question, Jenny. Thanks. Any more? Uh, over here and I'll work back. Um, in terms of tracking businesses, when did the state start taxing businesses and keeping track of I don't know the answer to that. Right now, um, because of the generosity of somebody that bought one of our former uh, treasurer's homes, we've, we ended up with 30 years of tax levies that we're still <laughs> processing. 
So eventually I'll be able to figure out when they tax, but right now I don't know that answer off the top of my head. However, North Beach had a very robust Chamber of Commerce, huge Chamber of Commerce here for all the businesses. So there were a lot of businesses here and there was a lot of money here at that time, back here somewhere. Uh, Don? Uh, was the impact of World War II, did that have any effect on the town's uh, occupation? And, um... Oh, I'll get in trouble answering this. Okay. Um, the biggest impact I heard during World War II was uh, we did oral histories of all the local beach girls. And the beach girls and the boys got upset that the beach girls dated the guys from Randall Cliff, uh, from the Navy base there. So that's one big, huge impact, uh, that, because that's all they talked about in every oral history I did, was uh, how upsetting it was for the local boys that the Navy base opened. So. Um, we had ration cards, we have some ration stuff, and a lot of our men served in World War II as well as Vietnam, a lot of our local guys, but um, that's an answer that comes to mind quickly because I was just mesmerized by what they were saying. <laughs> okay, anybody else? Uh, yes, ma'am. A great-grandfather of mine came from D.C. during the summer to work, and I wondered, is there any such thing as employment records to, that I could track down? Only if we had the business records, and they've been very hard to come by. Um, if they weren't taken out in a fire, they were taken out in hurricanes. Uh, to find records of the businesses with the employment is, is very, very hard. We have some, but not very many, to be honest with you. And again, somebody has to think, oh, donate them to the museum so that they'll have these records. Yes, sir. One other question. Uh, over in North Beach here, my parents used to come to a dance club or a dance, is that going to be... Uh, the Temple of Mirth had dance, Uncle Billy's had dance, okay. Uncle Billy's had some really great, uh, very famous uh, bands came there. Uh, it was a, a very, very popular nightclub, huge nightclub, so a lot of dance clubs over here, as well as in Chesapeake Beach, but for purposes of this book, we were just talking about North Beach. Right. Both the beaches, you could just do, you could have so much fun, it was unbelievable, a lot of fun. Yes, ma'am. Well, what do you think is the biggest scandal that happened? <laughs> 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 biggest scandal. Uh, let, let's let Vincent answer this one. <laughs> so, the biggest scandal is actually a pretty hard one to, to, to talk about. Um, although, if you look at the newspaper records, they talk about quite a lot of goings on down here because most of the people that lived in North Beach came from D.C. Um, probably the biggest scandal of, to have happened down here was uh, a man named Charles Nelson. He worked um, at Uncle Billy's. And of course they had slot machines at the time. And he would bring in slot machines from out of state. He would keep them in counties that where gambling was not legalized. And actually ran a numbers racket out of DC, which was illegal at the time. And it was bad enough that the FBI actually became involved and raided his properties. And there was a huge court battle about it where actually 55 individuals were being prosecuted at one time. Um, so that was probably the largest scale um, thing that was going on, it was gambling. Um, and this, of course, was at a time where um, gambling was straddling the line between legal and illegal, um, especially because only the four Southern Maryland counties had legalized gambling. Um, so that's probably the biggest one. What about the second biggest one? <laughs> Again, that would be another gambling charge. There's actually, there actually a hotel that was across, um, it's, let's see, it'd be back behind me. Um, there was another hotel that had incidents there where they were actually not reporting uh, their earnings rights. They weren't paying the proper taxes. And of course, nobody likes when you don't pay your taxes, right? Um, so really, gambling seems to have been the biggest cause of misfortune and fortune uh, for North Beach between the 1940s and 1960s. Yes, yeah, so in the back there. I had always heard that drag shows and transvestite clubs were a big part of the culture of North Beach back in the day. Um, can you elaborate on that? Actually, we can. Um, we do have some. Let's get 
scandalous elaboration. <laughs> I don't know if we have that part. Um, but we actually do, we did include this in the book. Um, so you'll have to read through and figure out where I'm talking about. But if you look at the pictures, it's the Gold Key Club, which actually used to be located right where the uh, library is being built today. And that had drag shows. And we actually, um, I came across um, a magazine in an archive that actually had photos or photographs of the ladies performing on stage in the Gold Key Club. And we mentioned that, you know, the reference in the books, if you want to track it down, go for it. Um, but there actually were drag shows here in the 1950s and 1960s. Um, and there were a number of incidents between uh, the people in that club and Uncle Billy's across the street because they would both get liquored up and then go and fight each other. So there were a number of incidents between the two different businesses. So to, if, yes. if you don't mind, I'll finish up on that story. <laughs> sure. So I had also heard, I'm glad that you mentioned it, you had the transvestite clubs across the street was open bellies, which might have been frequented with, you know, bikers, if you will. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, when the bars you know, closed, as you said, fights broke out. And, you know, the, you know, the lore that I always heard was that you'd be surprised how many of those transvestites won those fights. <laughs> I would not surprise me. That. that would not surprise me. I'm going to add one thing to that, and then we're going to thank you for coming today, uh, mainly because uh, some of the house family is with us today. Um, Ewald's department store, I'm back to those 50, uh, those two women that own so much. Um, Bill Stone managed that store for a long time, and his daughter is here in the audience today, so she does not mind me sharing this story. There was a whole section he purchased, uh, the dresses, the size 12 shoes, and all of the decor for the female impersonators at the Gold Key Club. So they kept it local, and when I was a little girl working at Stennett's, um, we had two or three people that would come in and have breakfast when we were there in the morning. So um, the only time it was really the fights were Friday and Saturday night, and it was almost always alcohol-induced. Both sides had too much to drink and just decided to have at it. So, um, are there any more questions? I just want to uh, acknowledge someone that used to work at the Gold Key Club. Woody was a drummer. Oh, yeah. You know what? Well, thank you for that because nobody admits to one there, and I've only been able to. <laughs> it's been really hard for me to get pictures. Well, I didn't go to the Gold Key Club. I don't know anything about the Gold Key Club. So thank you. You went on. You went on a button today. Sundays you couldn't get in there. It was it was packed solid. There was a five dollar cover charge, and there was a line around the block to get in. Wow. It used to open at like eleven o'clock, and it stayed open till eleven at night. Um, it was. I, ne I don't remember any of the fights, honestly. <laughs> but, uh, uh, that's when Bob Cook actually. Oh, I, I think he just ran the. Uh, um, the bar and, and the uh, entertainment. Yeah. But it was it was fantastic. I mean, people would come from all over the uh, Baltimore, Washington, e everywhere to go there. It was really fun growing up here. Truly was. <laughs> Any more questions? Uh, yes, sir. I, one thing that I can think about with you is, with the original development, the town was found around what, around 1900. 1900 replanted in 1908. Oh, what? One of the things that, because you were talking about like with the bad transportation, where, what was the reason for building? Was this like a, uh, like in conjunction with Chesapeake Beach? And the, the, where, you know, okay, the first 40 years of North Beach were Washingtonians. Uh -huh. um, um, let me make the distinction between the two towns. Um, Chesapeake Beach was founded for gambling. From the get-go, it was founded for gaming with the casinos, a horse racing track, all the lavish Belvedere hotels and all the gaming tables and everything that was inside. North Beach was founded to be the family resort. So they would come by steamboat or they would come uh, by the train and they would take a trolley over here or try to get over here any way that they could. But in the beginning it was really the Washingtonians wanted to get out of the oppressive heat of summer. 
and all the early ads for North Beach talked about, I, I was really surprised, and almost every ad it said, uh, come here for the artesian well, fresh milk, no doctor needed in the beaches. So the ads were so interesting in the early 1900s. So they came to the seashore because they deemed it a healthy way to spend their summer. It's really a very basic answer, but that's what drove them here. And then so many came, it just became very, very popular. So you're saying that the original point of the town was like summer residents. Oh yes, yeah. Growing up here in Pacatayu, um, there would be thousands of people here during the summer, and you couldn't wait to see them in May. You couldn't wait for them to go home in September. And um, we have one slide that I didn't show here today, but we have the statistics for the numbers of people. I think I gave it at the Chesapeake Beach Town presentation. There were only three or 400 people here during the winter. Uh, nothing was winterized. There, there was, uh, everyone had an outhouse. Uh, you had to go to those wells that Denson talked about being provided, but you really came here for the summer and you could not have lived here during the winter because nothing, the cottages were not insulated. You saw some pictures of them. They weren't built for long-term use. Uh, the trend really started, um, one, the Bay Bridge was built, so that was the first nail in the coffin of North Beach. The final nail on the coffin of North Beach was when the legislature outlawed slot machines in 1968. We had a lot of revenue, income, and it was our economic development. And when the slot machines were outlawed, uh, people uh, started staying here during the winter, and they actually started winterizing the cottages at that time. Okay, last question? Did somebody? Oh, okay. Just comment. Bob Sheets went out in May of 67. Okay, thank you. Okay. I was 16. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't allowed to watch. I got to play three months legally. Um, <laughs> yes, Just a comment. My, um, my dad and my uncle used to come down from Washington to see Uncle Billy's. And um, when we bought our property in Dunkirk about 50 years ago, my dad said, oh my God, you're moving, you're a wild place. We had some good And granddaddy said, oh my God, I had many a trip down there to get your uncle and your dad. <laughs> so, um, and I took daddy's past four months ago, he was 95, and I took him a couple years ago riding through the beaches and we had lunch and he was astounded. Yeah. It has really changed a lot and that that's why the book is important and we the book is really for newcomers there's an address under every picture so if you've moved here and you're living at one of those addresses you can see what used to be there um, when I grew up here the only time that we weren't allowed at the beach was that brief time when we had the motorcycle issues after the outlawing of the slot machines to the early 70s, and then we weren't allowed to come over here. So, yeah. All right, well, I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, if you haven't bought a book, please purchase a book from us. And uh, if you have any questions, Vincent and I are right here. And we're delighted to answer any additional questions you might have. Thank you.